I had a friend recently send me the trailer to the new Kamen Rider game wondering if I could play it on my channel. But yeah, I just have the Xbox over there. Oh come on, don't look at me like that. The only reason I have an Xbox is because it's the superior console, able to play 4K movies at the full quality. I mean, how else am I gonna watch Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children on 4 definition case? Huh? I don't even know what I just said there. It also helps me keep the demons at bay. Get out of here, demon! Get out! Okay, okay, since you're here, I guess we might as well just watch Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. That's right, get out of here. Anyway, the game in question was a Common Rider Climax Fighters. And after watching this two or eight times, uh, I noticed that the title was similar to the only other Common Rider game I had ever played, which was Common Rider Climax Heroes. Now, these games are from the same line of fighter games, with the main keyword being Climax. And that got me wondering, what other tokusatsu games are out there just waiting for me to discover? Strap yourselves in everybody, today we're looking at all the odd entries in tokusatsu video game history. Let's kick it! Does that smell? Oh, Ultraman. All right, that's a good start. I mean, how bad could it be? The MSX was actually very successful and came before the great success of Nintendo's family computer console. Even the Metal Gear series was originally written for MSX hardware. Okay, this game doesn't look too bad, and it's around the same time that a lot of really big movies were getting video game deals. So I mean, how bad can it be? Okay, so I'm this salmon-colored plane. I also can't crash it into the ocean and end it all. You know, that's very Ultraman-like. Okay, got it. Then there's... Oh, this game went from 0 to 10 in an instant. Well, now we got spaceships and even something down here. And then there's... Wait, what, what happened? What just happened? Oh, they stole my... Uh, Mega horn? But also, what is this ship? Like, are these buildings? Then how big are these megaphones? Oh, look, they got Godzilla for this game, too. Very subtle. <laughs> it was at this very moment I couldn't put myself through it anymore to even get to the actual Ultraman portion of the game. Yes, it was that bad. I just can't. Can we please move on? No! Stop it! Stop it! What now? Bad Ultraman. <laughs> In my travels across this tokusatsu timeline of video games, I found a couple titles that weren't based on a pre-established series or season that was currently running when the game came out. Buso Keiji Cybercross was one of these games that I found. Now this story has a great set of villains and a very good looking hero. The game handles well and has a fun beat-em-up that I was embarrassed I played for about 40 minutes while making this video. There are even power-ups that allow you to change your color and fighting styles too. Similar to my boy Kuga. You know, good old Yusuke. Yeah, we go back. Not like back to 2000, more like back to 2009. <clears throat> anyway. Even the level bosses feel ripped right out of a show you would see for a Monster of the Week on Superhero Time. Huh. I get the feeling they want me to jump up here or something. I can just imagine the playtesters actually getting stuck here in a game dev yelling, WE NEED SOMETHING TO LET THEM KNOW THEY CAN GO UPWARDS! Uh, uh what, what, what about a sign that says jump up with a big arrow? PERFECT! Put in three of them. Also, can we talk about this bunny boss for a second? Hello? Basically, this game is just a more linear Mega Man experience, with the same theme song in the background that eventually becomes a living nightmare. They also reuse bosses towards the end of the game in a very rushed boss rush style for a stage. Still, for a quick and fun play, this game hits nostalgia and is a good example of classic Toku-inspired gaming. Now over the years, series tie-in games became more of the norm and moving more towards the future. Ultraman towards the future, yeah? Am I, am I right? It became almost all of what we saw. And no, I'm sorry, I'm not actually gonna be talking about Ultraman towards the future. <laughs> this isn't an Ultraman channel, sorry. There were Space Sheriff games for the PS2, as well as Kamen Rider ones too. Fies was a very notable inclusion to the genre by basically paving the way for the present Climax series. Something about it was just inherently fun. Does anybody else get Kingdom Hearts music vibes? 
However, my favorite game that I found during this era is so Japanese that I can't even believe that people bought it at full price when it came out. I was also joking about this being my favorite game. That's right, I'm talking about Kamen Rider Pachinko. To be honest, I've only played these at a convention and it seemed even worse when I was handing actual money over to a grown man who's handing me this bowl of metal balls and watching them all go into the machine and disappear with nothing happening whatsoever. Kind of like what's happening right now. The thing that baffles me too is that there are a handful of these Kamen Rider Pachinko titles. I know I may be overreacting a little bit here, but I just don't know what the f is going on. And before anybody in the comments tries to explain the intricacies of Pachinko to me, just remember, I don't care. I don't care. Now, I'm not forgetting about good old America, and we've got some pretty good titles over here too. The aforementioned Ultraman Towards the Future, and of course Power Rangers saw a healthy life on the SNES home console, even with the obvious ripoffs. Moving forward and ignoring the other Saban branded titles, we come to one of the best original Tokusatsu inspired game on the GameCube, and eventually the PS2 as well. Oh yeah, I'm talking about one of my favorites, Beautiful Joe. Oh, me? If you have never played this video game before, what the hell is wrong with you? Pause this video, pause it right now, and go, go, go to your room, go play beautiful, go, just go! For those of you who have played it, you'll know this Tokusatsu masterpiece is one of the most on-the-nose works that deals with you, Joe, a guy who drags his girlfriend to the movies constantly to see the same costumed hero save the day, until the movie reaches out and kidnaps her. And it's up to Joe now to enter the movie and save the day as a costumed hero himself. Come on, even his catchphrase is great. Henshin. Henshin, go go, baby. This game had it all, even a kick-ass sequel too. So I wanted to end this video with something that was very important to me as a person. I'm talking about Super Sentai here. And did you know that they still make these side-scrolling beat-em-ups for the DS family of consoles? It's awesome! These games are exactly what I would want as a kid in Japan. Well, that and the ability to buy the toys without the crazy shipping fees that usually come along with them. I mean, they actually have the actors involved voicing the game. I mean, it could just be ripped from the show too, I don't actually know. And it seems pretty easy and straightforward. You can even change between the heroes with a button. Dang, enter, you're looking good in this. Even for just a regular DS title. <laughs> I know I'm kicking your ass enter, but, uh, <laughs> what's, are you okay? Even the Megazord fights are more fun than I was expecting, but yeah, you basically play through entire episodes, and this is actually really surprisingly cool. They've made a ton of these, from Go Buster to even Ninja, but we don't actually have to look at that one. I'm, you're welcome. So I was really excited to play the Q-Ranger one, but then I found out it doesn't exist. Well, I mean, Juoger's fine with me too, I guess. Let's do that. Now yes, there were many titles that I didn't include in this video, and probably for good reason. But if you guys want to see a part two, it all depends on if you guys like what we did here today. But other than that, I've seen a lot making this video. A lot that doesn't, you know, make it into the final cut, and it changes a man. It could change you too if you saw the same shit that I did. I don't know if I want to keep going on, you know. Maybe if there was a, like a sign or something. Oh. Oh. Jesus. Jesus, is that you? Je Jesus, could you turn it down a little bit? It's really 
really bright. Oh, it is you! Yes, my son. I have brought you gifts for the next installment. No, no! God, what? Power Ranger games, what? Am I supposed to do the next episode on Power Ranger games? What the hell? I guess it's better than Pachinko. What the hell, this is just Power Ranger movie on Blu-ray. How am I supposed to play this? How am I supposed to play this? So, wow! Uh, that was interesting. That was the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, I mean, I, you probably did, you know, seeing as you've made it here at the end now. Thank you. Well, this is the end part of the video where I ask you to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Come on, it helps out a lot more than you think. And I also want to give a shout out to all my Patreon subscribers that have helped make this video come out a little bit sooner than I was initially planning. So thank you to Lisa Sandberg, HPG, and Hoju for helping bring this video to life. And you can become a sponsor too if that's something that, you know, you, you kind of want to do. It's, it's, it's fun. That was, <laughs> that was a weird one. Only Patreon subscribers will have access to the Discord where we talk about future videos and some other sweet <laughs> Till next time. <laughs> how was that, guys? Is that, how bad was that? <laughs>